What's up LEGO fans? Welcome to my channel, Pete's Bricks, the LEGO channel for the common LEGO fan. Today we're going to get right into another LEGO Bionicle mock breakdown. This time we're looking at a fully revamped and redesigned version of one of my favorite LEGO Bionicles, that is Toa Kongu, the Mari version specifically. This mock was designed by the Instagram user Balum Nom Nom, aka Matt Goldberg, who for the sake of simplicity, I will be referring to as Matt in this video. But before we break down the parts and building techniques in Matt's awesome Bionicle mock, I wanted to give a huge thank you and a shout out to Christian Faber, one of the creators of Bionicle who actually subscribed to my channel. In case you don't know, which you probably already do, Christian Faber was the head art director of Bionicle and he was the one who came up with the original idea for the entire story. Creator of Bionicle, subscribing to my channel was a huge moment for me and I am super, super grateful. Christian, if you're watching, thank you so much. You made my day, week, month, year. I'll, I'll go with the year for this one. You can subscribe to his YouTube channel, Copenhagen Rig. I will leave the link in the description. But without further ado, let's get right into this video. So right here is the mock and it looks awesome. First of all, I wanted to point out the background, which is something a lot of people don't really pay attention to. However, this background was made with the original Toa Mari in mind and it really captures that aesthetic. So you have the underwater seafloor, even some bubbles around Kongu's mask head area. And I also like the white pattern detailing kind of around the back in a half circle. It really takes me back and it fills me with a lot of nostalgia for the 2007-2008 Toa Mari line. Of course, the first Lego set that I have to address is the original Toa Kongu Mari figure, which is what this mock is based off of. The original set was set 8910, Toa Kongu and it came out in the year 2007. The only pieces that were used in the original set that reappear in this redesign are the mask and the red bullets. First of all, the mask I think is super cool. I like the design. I like the dark green. Dark green is one of my personal favorite Lego colors and to me it's a bit more sophisticated as the kind of basic normal green that you typically see in Lego base plates. The red bullets themselves are kind of hard to see in this mock, but right here, this is what they look like. They are kind of a rubbery, kind of flexible projectile piece. In the original sets, you got six of them per blaster. This is the blaster right there. They all just kind of fit inside of there. This, by the way, is called a Kordak blaster. In Matt's mock, he doesn't use this piece. He completely redesigns it using some pretty interesting parts, which I will get to in one second. But first, I wanted to explain exactly how this worked and how the missiles were fired. So as you can see here, it has this pump. And when you would pump it, the barrel would rotate just like so. And every time you would do that, it would pump in some air, which projected the missiles forward. To get it going, you have to kind of go a few times. So let's see if this works. Just like that, see? All of the Toa Mari included one Kordak blaster and one other type of weapon, right? You had Toa Nuburu who had a gun and a shield. Toa Matoro had a gun and a large claw thing. Kongu, on the other hand, decided to pick up two blasters and just run into battle full Rambo mode. As I said, Matt's mock features completely redesigned Kordak blasters, with the missiles themselves being set in a way that makes them look like barrels instead of just shooting straight out of the cannon, which I think is a pretty neat idea. In this entire mock, Matt uses a lot of interesting building techniques, but the one part that really stood out to me in his version of the Kordak blaster would be the large black gun piece that can only be found in the Star Wars buildable figure sets. You can only find this piece in a total of two different sets, one of which is the Imperial Death Trooper, set 75121. Looking at the color scheme of this mock, you have the primarily green Kongu, with bits of black and red. I think the little pops of red amongst the sea of green in this figure are great because according to color theory, red and green are complementary colors. So the red is going to pop more against the green than any other color. But I specifically wanted to point out the green pieces used for both the shoulders 
and the chest, which contain both light and dark green. The shoulders can be found in set 8994 Baroness V7. This was a Bionicle Glatorian era set, which came out in the year 2009. The Agori character riding the chariot is called Shamad, and the two-headed creature was known as Spigot. Now this is some serious MPU, some serious nice parts usage, in which he took some parts used for a creature's head and repurposed them as shoulder pads. I honestly think this parts use is pretty perfect. The slope of the head, the way the bottom kind of slopes back forward to create a kind of armored appearance I think is perfect and it just really shows you what you can do with different Bionicle parts. Moving on to that really cool chest plate, that is from set 8940 Karzani from 2007. Karzani is another creature banished in the deep. He's kind of turned into that mutated, horrific looking creature. I think the marbled parts work perfectly with Karzani because he's this mutated prisoner of the deep, but they also work well with the hero Toa Kongu. Matt's Kongumak also borrows the feet of Karzani that come in that really nice dark green. Now why I think that these marbled parts work perfectly with this Kongu in particular is because it blends the two different green colors used throughout Kongu, right? The only really dark green parts are the feet and the mask, then you have that brighter lime green, but having the dark green and the light green together, especially around the mask, create a sort of transition from the solid dark green to the solid light green. I think that is some great parts use and props to Matt for taking pieces from completely different years, 2007, 2009, and bringing them together in this mock. Traveling further down the legs and looking at the shin guards, we can see they are black, but that they also have some spikes on them. Those pieces originated from the Hero Factory line and first appeared in sets like 2232 Rawjaw. That set was later used in more Hero Factory models, but surprisingly also appeared in a Ninjago set in 2015 set 70737 Titan Mech Battle. Just like the color red is used sparingly and to great effect, the color black is also used throughout this mock. And I think adding a pop to the legs gives it a real sleekness and the spikes look pretty cool because who doesn't like spikes? While the original Toa Kongu does have those dual wielding cannons, which Matt's mock does retain, Matt takes the firepower to a whole nother level by adding massive missile launchers on Toa Kongu's shoulders as well on the side of his legs, effectively turning Kongu into a walking tank. Moving around back, we can really see all the different parts at play in this mock. For example, he built those really awesome shoulder-mounted missile launchers completely out of system bricks. Some parts I wanted to point out are the mixel joints, which are only available in light gray and dark gray. I know a lot of LEGO fans complain about that. However, I think they're used perfectly in this model and the gray plastic really pairs nicely with the black and it doesn't stand out at all. In this mock, we have two sets of tubes. We have the lighter gray tubes, which kind of emulate the original tube that was used on Toa Kongu's mask. And around back, we have some black tubes that connect the back to the guns. Maybe those tubes are meant to supply energy, fuel, more bullets. I don't know. Use your imagination on that. I think adding tubes to any Bionicle mock just adds more detail and more interest to the character. On Kongu's back, we have a combination of Hero Factory, Technic, and even System parts. As you can see, the lower back is made out of System slopes, while the upper back is comprised of some Technic parts connecting those tubes, as well as a large fist-like shaped Hero Factory part in lime green. Looking further down, we can get a better look of those missile sections on the side of his legs. We have some flaps in black, some bar pieces, along with some of those newer triangular slopes, which add just another dimension and even more detail to the character. Finally, something I've noticed in Bionicle Builders specifically is the use of tires around joints. In this mock, there are two tires, one on each ankle. He could have left these parts off and the mock would have looked fine. In fact, it would have looked more than fine. It would have looked still really good, but just adding those little bits of roundness 
helps make the character feel a bit more organic. I also wanted to point out the brick built hands on this character who does use system parts to get the fingers. This is a typical piece that LEGO uses in their mechs from Ninjago mechs to Hulkbusters. However, these brick built hands I think are a lot better than the original Kongu who just had normal pieces for the hands with no fingers. So super great improvement even in just that. Lastly, I have to talk about the light up head used on this version of Kongu. The original Kongu featured a gray head, while this version has a translucent head from the Hero Factory brain attack wave. This allowed Matt to put some LEDs in there and light up the head, which takes this mock to a whole nother level. You can see here in this video the wires attached, you know, there's no way to kind of hide those wires. You don't really see those wires from any angle if you're looking at it just straight from the front. And I think it really transforms this character. Like I said, takes it to a whole new level. This is something I think all LEGO mock builders should implement in their builds. Lights just add a whole nother dimension, but it just kind of brings the mock alive. Again, really great mock by Matt Goldberg, the best Kongu I have ever seen. I'm going to link his Instagram in the description. Huge thanks to him for letting me break down his Bionicle mock. And another big thanks to Christian Faber, the creator of Bionicle, for creating this fantastic theme that still, years after it ended, still has tons of dedicated fans in a huge Bionicle community who is still passionate about the story to this day. Right here, I have my own copy of Kongu. He's looking a little, little shabby here. He's missing some parts. I was only able to find one of the blasters here. I, I don't know where the other one went. He may be pretty worn and beat up, but boy, did I have a lot of fun playing with him as a kid. I also had a lot of fun researching and making this video. If you found this video entertaining or useful, I do ask that you please subscribe to the channel. It only takes one second and I would really appreciate it. That being said, have a good day, God bless, and I will see you guys in the next LEGO video on my channel, Pete's Bricks.